boys and girls and welcome to Storybook Classroom 1. I know it's not too easy to find, is it? Now, in today's lesson, we'll be learning about some of the queens in black history. The black community at its core is a beautiful race, capable of achieving wondrous and remarkable feats. <coughs> no, not F-E-E-T, F-E-A-T, feat. It means an achievement that requires great courage, skill, and strength. Look at that, boys and girls. We're learning already. We need a story. After three, let's all shout out, Kitty Cat Kelly, we need a story. One, two, three. Kitty, Kitty Cat, Cat Kelly, Kelly. We, we want, want a story. story. Whilst Preacher is away refreshing his knowledge, we're going to read from Vashti Harrison's book, Bold Women in Black History. As I always tell Preacher, knowledge is power, and we gain knowledge through stories. Because there are so many bold women in history, boys and girls, I'll let you decide who we read about. The pages will turn, and when you're ready, shout stop as loud as you can. And whoever we stop on is who we'll read about. Okay, get ready. Zora Neale Hurston, born 1891 to 1960. Oh, she's perfect to start with. Zora was born in Eatonville, a historic town in northern Florida. Eatonville was iconic because in 1886, it became the first self-governed all-black city in America. There was always an extreme sense of pride in its culture and traditions. Zora had a unique upbringing in storytelling and creativity. She enrolled at Howard University in 1918, and there she published her first story. By 1925, Zora had won awards and had caught the attention of other prominent black authors. Prominent means important or famous. Zora was the first black graduate of the all-women's Barnard College. She worked alongside famous creatives, including Langston Hughes, Courtney Cullen, and Elaine Locke, who were involved in the black artistic movement known as the Harlem Renaissance. Zora was even given the name Queen of the Renaissance. Zora realized the need to record African-American stories, and she celebrated them long before others realized how important they would be. Let's give a big round of applause to Zora Neale Hurston. Yeah! All right, boys and girls, get ready. Here we go again. When you're ready, shout stop. stop. Augustus Savage, born 1892 to 1962. She was an educator and a sculptor. Oh, Augusta grew up in a poor family with 13 brothers and sisters in Green Coal Springs, Florida. 13? Brothers and sisters? Oh, wow. Huh. As a child, Augusta had no toys to play with, but she loved making things. Augusta spent a lot of time in her back garden as the soil was rich with natural red clay. She learned to make miniature animals, and despite her father not approving her creativity, she continued to sculpt. She did what made her happy, despite what others thought. I love that. Augusta was also part of the Harlem Renaissance, and despite thriving artistically, she was met with hardships brought about by racism oh, that was still common in the United States as well as around the world. But this did not stop her. No, it didn't, boys and girls. She was actually called a troublemaker because she openly fought racism in the art world. Good on to you. Augusta dedicated much of her life to teaching and encouraging young people to pursue their artistic passion. In 1932, she opened up her school, the Savage School of Arts and Crafts. 
and she became the first director of the Harlem Community Arts Center. Wow. No matter her hardships, she never stopped creating art. Let's have a big round of applause for Augusta Savage. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, here we go again. Seaman William Brown, born 1794, and she was a sailor. She actually, boys and girls, secretly disguised herself as a man in order to serve in the British Royal Navy. There are varying accounts of William Brown's story. One version was published in the Annual Register for 1815. It stated that she served on the HMS Queen Charlotte for upwards of 11 years. The story says she took on many jobs aboard the ship and was capable of steering the wheel and navigating through shallow waters. She even served some time as a captain on the foretop, leading the other sailors high above the ship in the upper sails. We may never know exactly what happened to William Brown, and we don't know her true name, but one thing is clear. She successfully enlisted and served her country, and is recorded as the first black female to serve in the British Navy. Let's give a big round of applause to Seaman William Brown. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, get ready. Are you going to shout stop? Mary Prince, born 1788 to 1833. She was an author and a Bolshevist. Mary was born into slavery and was rarely in charge of her own story. In the course of her life, she was bought and sold five times. It's sad, I know, but her story gets better. Mary managed to teach herself to read. And in 1828, she travelled to England with her owners, but swiftly escaped to freedom. She then began to campaign for the abolition of slavery throughout the British Empire. Abolition is the act of officially ending or stopping something. In 1831, she wrote and published her autobiography, The History of Mary Prince, a West Indian slave related by herself the first account of a black woman ever published in Britain and it was so successful it printed three times that year. Through her detailed storytelling she helped people to realise just how terrible it was to be a slave. Mary used her story and her powerful words to reach people and in turn to help change history and in 1833 the Slavery Abolition Act was passed and slavery was banned throughout the British Empire. Ho ho! Let's give a massive round of applause to Mary Prince. <laughs> it looks like we've got time for one more before Kelly's quiz. Here we go. <laughs> Nichelle Nichols. Born in 1932, Nichelle was a gifted dancer, actor and singer. She got her first professional role when she was 14. In 1966, Nichelle made her mark on the world when she was cast in the brand new science fiction series, Star Trek. As communications officer, Lieutenant Uhara, Nichelle was the first woman of colour in history, in a leading role on prime time TV. And her character, Uhara, was smart, brave, dignified, and treated with respect. Martin Luther King had in fact urged her to continue her role, as she was a symbol of hope and a source of inspiration to people of colour across America. Isn't that amazing, boys and girls? Yeah! And guess what? Martin Luther King was right. Through her role, Nichelle inspired Dr. May Jemison to apply to NASA, who
who then went on to be the first African American in space. Oh, Nichelle now works for NASA, traveling around the United States to recruit young men and women of color. Let's have a big round of applause for Nichelle Nicole. <laughs> It looks like that's all we have time for today, kids. But don't worry, this is just the first of many history with patches. So make sure you've subscribed to the channel. And if you've enjoyed learning about some of the black queens of history, why not grab your own copy of Vashti Harrison's Bold Women in Black History today? Patches! I best be going. I'll meet you all back in Storytropolis for the final part of our Black History Month special. 